Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matthias, and yes, this is the ultimate cooking guide for scum from the 0.7 update. In the future, they will give us a cooking game, but for now, I just want to solve all your cooking issues, you know, um, quite easily. So, because of the new temperature system in the game at the moment, the only time you can really use one fire um, underneath a barbecue is when you're in the south, okay? Um, really, I haven't really tested it in the, a, in the A sectors, but I know in the Z sectors where it's much warmer, um, you can cook meat or, you know, meat or fish on a, on a barbecue because the temperature that is surrounding you at this moment has a big effect on the heat that's coming from the fire, okay? So if your environmental heat is too cold, which it has changed drastically with the new temperature system and all the new systems that have come out, because I, um, I used to use the fire ring from about, zero, from about the 0 0.5 um, update, and the fire ring worked very, very well for me. But as I had to adapt... The new meta at the moment, if you're making a fire in the middle or in the north of the map, then it's better to use two, okay, um, improvised fireplaces and not the fire ring. The reason I say two improvised fireplaces is very difficult to fit two fire rings underneath um, the barbecue. And then a major tip when you're using a barbecue is craft, place the barbecue first, and then you place um, the um, the fireplaces, okay, the improvised fireplaces. If you place the fireplaces first and then you try and put a barbecue over it, you will struggle now and then, okay? Now, I feel the main reason for people struggling with the cooking at the moment is, first of all, they don't understand that uh, on servers, in single player it works quite well, but on servers, and I do all my tests on servers, a lot of people do their tests and guides on single player, and there's a lot of things that doesn't work the same on multiplayer as it does on single player, okay? Um, that is personally why I pay for a test server so that my information is accurate because there are differences between single player and multiplayer. Not really going to get into all of that right now, okay? But the big difference with cooking is that your data struggles to refresh on a server. In, in single player, your data refreshes quite, e you know, quite quickly, so it's easy to cook meat in single player. But on multiplayer, you have to move your meat constantly. What do I mean by moving meat? I mean you start the fire, you wait till the meat says hot, and, you know, hot and raw by inspecting it, and then you just have to move your meat and put it back on the same spot like that. Now, because I'm from South Africa, we have to turn our meat constantly. So it's not something new, but it's something that you have to get used to. Because if you don't do this every minute while you're cooking your meat, the data won't refresh. It will still say hot and raw. And then, you know, if you leave it, at some point, it's just going to say, you know, um, overcook or burnt. You know, and you're like, in what the heck happened? And what you must realize, every time you move the meat, it refreshes the data on the meat so that you get a much smoother transition. If you meet, move your meat on the fire every minute or close to the fire every minute, it's going to go into slightly cooked. You know, and you, if you keep moving it, it's going to go into cooked. And uh, a way that I like to safeguard my meat so that, so that, I, so that I never overcook it is to take it off when it's slightly cooked. Okay, there's no difference between slightly cooked and cooked, nutrition wise. Okay, but I am going to give you guys a few tips here of you know what's my favorite meat and you know what are the nutritional values. Now, the big thing I'm making this guide is because I know a lot of people use skewers. Okay, but skewers gives you a heck of a lot of fat. Okay, I'm not going to show you skewers, you know, you guys know what skewers is. You take a piece of meat. You go chop down a bush, okay, and then you craft the skewer, okay, or you craft a, a bigger skewer, okay, um, and that is a very, very easy way to get 
meat, but it gives you a ton of fat and it's not good for your dexterity or your diet as well, at all. Yes, a skewer cooks much faster, but even if you cook a skewer, it's still going to give you a lot of fat, a ton of fat, which is not good for your diet, okay? The only time I use a skewer is if my protein is zero and my fat is zero, and I'm in an energy deficiency, you know, where I go to health, it says energy deficiency, then I'll eat a skewer for emergencies because I'm basically dying of hunger, so I don't care what I eat. But as I'm building my dexterity and managing my character, I like to cook most of my food, okay? So let's go into the cooking. Now, here we've got a barbecue with two fires underneath it. And then when we go outside, we've got a fire that you would put outside. And then we, I'm just going to show you how you move all, all of this closer. So we've got fish, we've got seagull, we've got crow, and then we've got my favorite pork. Because you do find pigs quite regularly, or you know, warthogs quite regularly on the island. Um, and here I've got exactly the same, okay? We've got... We've got like seagull, and interesting fact is a seagull, and uh, you know, a seagull gives you more than a crow. A seagull gives you six uh, pieces of breast, crow only three. A seagull gives you four drumsticks, and a crow only gives you two drumsticks. Okay, so a seagull is actually better in that regard. Now, if you still want nutritional value, but you don't want to cook your meat, then of course salt is a great thing. But at the moment, and this is the only thing I haven't really focused on or figured out, if any of you know how to salt um, crow meat or seagull meat, let me know. Because if you click on the on the crow, you know, and the salt, the no cup option comes up to salt it. But if you click on meat, any meat from an animal then you can craft salted salted meat, okay? And the great thing about salted meat is you can see, even if I have meat in my inventory or in my chest and it goes down to 1%, like this meat is 98%, but even if I leave my meat to like, you know, to get to like 10% durability, as soon as I salt it, it refreshes that goat meat to 100%. And then it will last a heck of a lot longer than the unsalted meat does. But if you chopped up a bear and you have a ton of meat and you're like, oh my word, I'm never going to be able to eat this meat because it's too old. Because as the durability goes down, so the nutritional value goes down. Let's say you get 10 protein and 5 fat for a piece of meat and it's at 50% durability. You're only going to get 5 protein and 2.5 and fat. Okay? I hope that is simple enough. And then when you eat salted meat, it isn't that bad for you, okay? So what I mean by that is we can eat salted meat now, and, you, and you'll see that, you know, you get a bit of repulsion, but it's not that bad. It's, you know, I can eat like 10 pieces or seven or, you know, seven pieces of salted meat, and it's fine. And you can see on a, um, on a goat, you know, one gram of fat and 10 grams of protein. That's what you want. You don't want a lot of fat. Luthias, why don't I want a lot of fat? Because to get to the max fat level, you only need 20 grams of fat. But to get to the max protein value, you, you, know, you, you need 50 grams of protein to get to the max. Okay? So you can see there, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 grams. Okay? And here by fat, it's only got four sections. 5, 10, 15, 20, okay? That's why you always like the, your, you need like two and a half times the protein, okay, that you need fat. Because if it goes over a certain level, you're going to be like, even with just this goat meat, okay, I'm still, I'm not gaining any dexterity because I've got food in my system. If I eat more uh, meat now, my dexterity is going to be going down. Okay, which is very, very important. So that is basically salted goat meat. Okay, now if we go look at raw goat, um, goat meat, now look at the repulsion. Okay, the repulsion is a bit worse, but we're still getting the same value. Okay, so that's up to you. If you want, to, in my opinion, eating raw meat, 
is better than eating a skewer. Okay, eating salted meat and raw meat, in my opinion, is better than eating a skewer. And if the food repulsion bothers you, just you know, just drink some water. Now, I've already drank this, but if I drink this water, look at the repulsion now. The repulsion goes, you know, the repulsion goes away. So water, you know, removes the nausea from eating foods <coughs> that you don't like. Now, let's look at the cooking. Okay, so I've explained enough things now. Let's go look at the cooking. So, <laughs> when you put an uh, improvised fireplace down, it's usually going to start at 5 out of 10 burning stage. Burning stage means how hot it is. To make this simple for you, 10 out of 10 is not hot. <laughs> Sorry. 10 out of 10 is not hot. 0 out of 10 is hot. So, what the fire will do is, as, as it loses heat, it will go to 10 out of 10 and then it will die. Okay, there'll just be a pile of ashes left there. When it's at zero out of 10, it's at its hottest and it will last a lot longer. Okay, so we're going to start this because we've got matches on us. So we're going to light this fire and we're going to light this fire. Okay, both of our five out of 10. And if I move this meat and I go onto it, I hold in F and I, and I inspect it. Okay, check taste. It says warm and raw. Meat does not cook when it's warm. Meat cook when it's when it's hot. Okay, so even though I have two fires underneath this meat, it's not going to do anything. So you've got two options to make a fire go to zero. Your first option, let's just light this fire. There is five out of ten. Okay, if I move this, if I move this around, check taste. It's just raw. Okay, so you've got two options to increase a fire's strength. The fastest ways, a lot of people use sticks and rags and sometimes they make a mistake and they add their cash to the fire, which is extremely, extremely bad. But first option is animal fat, which you get from the animal when you kill it. So if I add animal fat to it, okay, it takes a whole point away. So you can use the animal fat to help you, okay, and you get big animal fat as well, like... If I just have to go here to fat, big animal fat, okay? So this is a nice chunky piece. This is basically the fat that you get from from most of the big animals, okay? If I add the, this fat, okay, it's going to go to zero. There, okay? It used all the fat and now it's at zero. So that's one great way of maximizing a fire's heat. Now, if you don't want to use a barbecue, okay, then if we go look here... It says warm and raw, okay? And if I move it, just to refresh the data, it now it says hot and raw, okay? That's what I mean by data. I didn't really put the, put the meat closer to the fire, okay? I just refreshed the data. So if I check this, warm and raw. If I just put it back down exactly where it was, hot and raw. Okay, so this is the big thing that you're struggling with or that people are struggling with that can't figure out the cooking. The data gets stuck. And the only way to refresh the data is to move the meat, okay? So all I do is I move this piece, I move this piece, and I just put it back exactly where it is. Okay, let's move this piece as well. Okay, so now when we go check, it's hot. You want it hot and raw. You want it hot and raw. Check taste, you want it hot and raw, you want it hot and raw, you want it hot and raw, okay? And the fish, seagull breast, no. Okay, the bass fillet is hot and raw as well. You have to be careful, you know, with what you check. Sometimes even the check taste takes long to come through. Now, even if I move all this meat around, nothing is going to happen. Okay? Because... We're not getting enough enough um, heat. So I've got two planks here, which you can get easily from chopping down a tree. So I'm going to add the wooden plank to the first one. Now it's 0 out of 10. I'm going to add a plank to the second one. And there it's 0 out of 10. Now I'm getting maximum heat from both. Still looks like nothing's happening until I move them. Okay, I refresh the data, and now all of them are hot and raw. 
Okay. And that, that is the big secret, guys, is checking the meat regularly. Now, you don't have to, like, check, 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 you know? You don't have to drive yourself crazy. About every minute to two minutes, okay? Every minute to two minutes, because some, some meat, you know, some kinds of meat or fish or birds, the, the, the cooking process differs from three minutes to about seven minutes, depending on what you're cooking. Okay, so every minute is good for me so that I don't make any mistakes. Okay, so let's just go through the process. The video's already gone on 15 minutes, but I want to, you know, it's better that I explain every single step to you guys so that you can copy exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so we did this first. And you'll get a few cues, you know, you'll get a few cues. The, sometimes the meat color will change. Sometimes the sound of the sizzling will change, you know, but at the end of the day, I just, I just check it, guys. That's all I do. I just check it, make sure it's, you know, close enough. There we go. It's hot. And then I check this. It's hot. Okay, that's seagull. This is drumstick. Check taste. You don't want to do it too fast, you know, because then you're looking at the wrong one. Crow, that's hot. Okay, let's just move all of them again. Refresh the data. Refresh the data. You could be looking at the wrong data. Okay? Check taste warm. You see? That was old data. That was old data. The, the fire is losing a bit of uh, power here, so I have to refresh the data. Now let's recheck it. Hot. 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 And you have to check it every minute. Otherwise, it could be warm. But it shows you hot, but it could be warm. And then you're like, why am I sitting here for 20 minutes waiting for this freaking meat to cook? The cooking is freaking busted. So you understand what I'm saying? The, the refreshing the data helps you to not burn it. But refreshing the data also helps you to not sit here for an half an hour. Because it tells you it's hot and you think it's cooking. In the meantime, it's actually warm because the fire's temperature went down. And you can see the fire's temperature is now at 1 out of 10. You have to take that into consideration. So now we're going to refresh this. Move every piece of meat. And that's what you, what you do normally when you cook meat. You have to check the meat regularly. If you put meat on an open fire like this and you walk away from it, you, you, you're not going to be happy. Your, your family is not going to be happy or your friends are not going to be happy because you are going to burn it. Okay? But I'm going to sit through this with you guys because I'm going to give you a bonus tip at the end. I always reward you guys for sitting through my long videos, okay, and being patient with me because I like talking, as all of you know. And yeah, I'm going to give, every time I think, yes, you know, you guys did really well sitting through all of this, I'm going to give you a bonus tip, okay? Okay, so let's look at this one. Slightly cooked, perfect. Slightly cooked, perfect. Slightly cooked, perfect. Breast, I'm waiting. Slightly cooked, I'm waiting for the information to refresh on that side. Raw, okay. Let's put it there. Still raw. Check taste, slightly cooked, perfect. So now we just put this little, the little stick here a little bit closer. Okay. Okay, okay. Seems like that one's still fine. <laughs> this loop this this year, you see the meat color has changed a little bit, which is telling me it's close to good. Okay, so I'm gonna check taste, slide to cook. Check taste, slide to cook. Check taste, slide to cook. Check taste. That's a drumstick. Crow drumstick, okay. I'm always waiting for that data to refresh. And uh, let's check this. Okay, and you can keep it longer, guys. So we're gonna put this right here in the middle. You know, you can keep it a little bit longer. If you're liking, I like, I don't like, you know, I don't like slightly cooked. I want my meat to be cooked. You can do that. Just remember that you're taking a risk that after cooked, okay, okay, now it's burning, it's too close. 
after cooked slightly cooked put a little bit further away still burning hot okay we can leave it here until it's cooked no problem I just remember slightly cooked you're safe you 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 can't make a mistake when it's cooked and you wait too long when it's cooked then it can go to overcooked or burnt and then you're lo losing all the nutritional value okay okay so we took that off but it's fine it's fine okay we can we can leave this one until it's cooked i think that's cooked yep that's cooked okay doesn't really matter now let's just put this out okay i think i have got an axe here somewhere um you can leave them to you know you can leave them to die on their own or you can destroy them with an axe i'm not going to really destroy them now okay so let me just put my bottle back because you use water to put them out um and let's just just go here um okay so if you use a cool ring bottle okay let's see how many uses the cooling bottle has and now we put it out with a cooling bottle of course okay see i usually leave my fires to go out on their own um, but if you want to put them out rather use like a one use you know one use out of bottle because you're going to use all the uses you know so rather use like I don't know, Coke can that you feel you know, like have Coke cans, you know, that you fold with water or have like water catchers or you can destroy them. Like I said, you can destroy them. Okay. So. Now you have to have an axe here. Let's, let's just grab the axe here quickly. It was not too difficult making another one. Okay. So you can destroy them if you like in... Hey, you know, I'm in a dangerous situation. I don't want the fire to attract any attention. You know, you can just go and destroy them. Or you can wait for them to die. It's fine. Um, so let's just, let's, just, let's just destroy this one. Because I want to talk to you guys. Okay, there we go. So remember, the meta are two improvised fireplaces next to each other. I even use this in the snow, guys. It will always, it will work in the snow. Okay now what is you know what is my favorite diet well guys let's look at the pork meat for animal meat pork and horse are my favorite okay because it gives you the best protein to fat ratio so this is cooked pork okay so we're going to eat the cooked pork I remember I'm looking for, I'm looking for like a 20%, you know, 2 to, I'm looking for about a 3 to 10 ratio. This is a 2.3 to 9.2 ratio. That's perfect for me. Okay, and then let's look at the fish, the bass. Okay, also a great ratio, and remember, I can kiss, I can catch fish forever. It takes me a while to find an animal, okay, but I can just go and fish regularly. That's why people say fishing is the best option, okay? And just for fun, guys, just for fun, I just want to check something here. Light fire. I've never really tried this, you know, but we're in the experimental mode here, yeah? so let's just check here quickly. Trying to aim up. Okay, if any of you were wondering, you can't kill the fire with peeing. Okay? Can't kill the fire with peeing. So let's just see a uh, coffee. Maybe a coffee cup is all right. Coffee cup. A coffee cup only has one use. 
coffee cup only has one use. No, you can't use a coffee cup. That's sad. That's sad. Can. So we can use a can. Yeah, we can use a can. Remember, you don't have to waste the cool drink because cool drink gives you carbs. You can just fill a bunch of beer cans or... You know, if you don't drink, collect a bunch of beer cans and put your fires out with the beer, you know. Put, or just keep your cans and fill them with water, okay? So you can put the fires out regularly. Okay, and then we look at... First of all, we're going to look at a crow, okay? So we're going to eat the breast... Now, the first thing that's going to pop out to you guys is a piece of crow breast gives me like three times the amount of protein, okay, that a piece of goat meat or pork gives me, which is a bit unrealistic, you know, but just remember, remember, crow is good, okay, so that's the breast. Now we go look at the drumstick, crow drumstick. Always give you guys things, you yeah? know? Always, always just giving you guys things that I learn over time. So we see the drumstick. Immediately we can see the drumstick. Um, you know, the drumstick's fat percentage is a little bit higher. But we can immediately see that the drumstick is giving us more protein than the breast. Okay, the drumstick is very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Okay. There we go. 43 grams instead of just 30 grams. Okay. And of course, it doesn't push up our calories too much. Okay. Of course, we're losing dexterity here, but we can eat quite a bit of this because it doesn't push up our calories too much. Now, we can eat like um, seagull because seagull gives us twice as much drumsticks and it gives us twice as much breasts, okay? So let's see what that equates to. So this breast was like 30 and 10. Okay, so we can see the seagull is giving us half the nutritional value. So it doesn't really matter if you kill a seagull or a crow. It's still going to give you the, the same amount of nutrition. Now, the big thing is that, yes, we're getting fat and we're gaining protein, but these are going to run out of our system very, very fast. So if our protein and our carbs and our fat are at a good level, then we just want to eat one piece at a time, okay? Because we just want a little bit. It does... It, 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 this doesn't mean you're going to gain 40 grams of protein here, guys. It doesn't mean we're going to end at 100 grams of protein, okay? Because we've still got a certain intake rate, which is only 117 grams per hour, okay? And we can clearly see this circle is not going to last an hour, okay? And if we run, we're going to be burning calories as well, okay? Because our calorie intake is about... 900 but by just by standing still here we're using 232 calories okay so you're going to burn a lot of it as you're moving now if you want if you want to eat something and forget about it you know like you feel your dexterity is fine and you just want to eat something and not worry about eating every 10 minutes okay what you're going to be doing then is you're going to be using the eat all function so if you eat pork Let's see if we've, we've got enough space in our stomach. If you eat pork, this is what I do with water or anything, okay? I go eat all, and then I usually aim for 50%. If I drink, uh, like, water, I never, like, if I don't want to worry about water, I drink, you know, a uh, canteen up to 48%, and I cancel it, and then I drink the other half of the canteen. So I've got two big circles, which gives me about 700 milliliters of water, and I know those circles are going to stay there for a while. So I don't have to worry about water for a while. Okay. So up to 50%. Now you can see it's increasing massively. Okay. 
So now we're making two big circles. We're going to end it before it gets to 50%. And then I'm going to eat all again. Okay, now I've got a big circle. Okay, that's giving me um, the same amount of... Remember, it's giving me the same amount of calories per hour. It's just going to last much longer. So now the possibility of me getting 45 grams over an hour is a lot better. It's still not going to last an hour, but it's going to last a heck of a lot longer than the first piece of pork that we ate is going to last. Okay? And now we've got two big circles. It's not giving us more calories, guys. Look, there, 140 to 337. It's not giving us more calories. A circle has the same amount of calories and the same amount of, like, um, intake. Okay? But it's just going to last much longer in your system. The thing is, you don't want too many circles because then you're wasting it. Like, if you eat too much, then a lot of your food is going to go into your colon because your body is not absorbing... Your body doesn't really absorb more than a thousand calories per hour. And your body doesn't really absorb more than 700 milliliters of water per hour. Okay? So you never, you never want more than two circles of water unless you're in a rush, you know. But, you know, um, to, to not pee and poop all the time, you don't want to go over a thousand calories, okay? And you don't want to go over 700 milliliters of water. Also, yeah? There. Intake. You don't want to go over 700 milliliters of water. And now you don't have to worry about these two circles. If you drink water long term, if you make two big circles of water, you don't have to worry about that long term. And now you can just play. Okay. And you do that with calories as well. So I see my carbs are on zero. I don't want to eat one piece of machini, which is my favorite for carbs. I don't want to eat one, 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 one. I want to go eat all. My, my calories is a problem at the moment, okay? So I want to eat all. And then I want to eat all. Now already I'm going way over, I'm like getting 1,700 calories per hour now. So you can see now, now my colon is starting to fill up. Look at, look at when we hit 2,000, you know, like 2,000 calories. Check here. Look, look how quickly our colon is falling, filling up. Look at those numbers, okay? Our water isn't filling up because our water intake is at about 700 milliliters per hour. So the water is, is nice. We're not wasting any water, really. We're wasting a ton of food because our colon just can't process, okay? It, all of this food that we're eating at the same time. But that doesn't matter. We are wasting a lot of food, but... We are getting 167 grams per hour. And these two circles are going to last a lot longer than one little circle. One little circle is only giving us 11 carbs. Okay? And look how fast it's going down. This is giving us 51 carbs. It's still going down at the same speed, but it's going to take five times longer to disappear. This circle is going to take five times longer than this circle to disappear so that I don't have to check on my food all the time, okay? So if you're at zero, if you're very low on carbs, protein, or fat, eat all. If you're, if you're doing good, eat one at a time, just to, just to keep it there, you know? Just eat one at a time. It's like, I want to keep it high, okay? But if you see, okay, it's becoming a problem, you eat, you know, you eat all. And I hope that explains, I hope that explains to you guys. Corn flakes is really, really good for vitamin D. Um, you know, bass doesn't really do it. Like if we go here, bass, we can eat this entire thing, eat all. Okay. We can eat this entire bass. Which is also better, you know, in the long run for protein. If like, if you see your fat, like my fat's now max. And my protein is more than it should be. Okay. But now you check if we eat an entire bass, it's, now it's looking good. Now it's like we ate one piece of meat, okay? But it's good, good, good food, okay? It's not going down too quickly. But it says here, vitamin D. It says that if you eat bass, which we just ate, it's giving you vitamin D. Bass doesn't give you vitamin D, guys. Um, corn flakes. It says they're corn flakes. Corn flakes gives you vitamin D. Milk gives you vitamin D. And mushrooms gives you vitamin D. 
please ignore the catfish and the bleak and the chub. Um, eggs probably gives you vitamin D. Um, you don't get deers or their female counterparts in the game anymore. So you, you can just ignore that. But goat, okay, it says goat. Um, do we still have goat meat here somewhere? Goat meat, okay, we eat a piece of goat meat. No, goat meat doesn't help you either. So if you want to help your vitamin D, buy cornflakes at the trader, buy milk at the trader, or find milk in cargo drops, and then just eat random mushrooms. Mushrooms gives you the least amount of vitamin D, but it gives you a lot of water as well. So if, you, if you're struggling with water, you know, just eat vitamin D, or eat mushrooms, and it will give you the water that you need, okay? So guys, that's 35 minutes. That's how we roll, okay? You guys know how we roll. We just throw it here. If you guys ever wondered how I'm, you know, how, why am I good with bows, it's because I train with different bows, okay? If you look here, uh, this is just my test server, okay? But I can build a base like this easily in multiplayer. So I've got the compound bow, and I've got the normal bow, and I've got a quiver with each of the arrows that I like to test, Okay? And then I just use a target that's quite far away, you know, just to test my accuracy. So I I look where the dot is. The dot is just above there, you know, and I check the distance that I can go with my character, okay? And then I just go and run up on it. And I see, you know, how's the accuracy? Do I, you know, do I know how to control it? It's not bad, okay? It's not bad. But that's... If you use a 20 pound bow or you use this cobra or you use you know every pound each makes a difference which you have to adapt to okay and every single bow has got its little fine tunings you know like there is variance with the bow because i don't have advanced archery you know or because i don't have a bow stabilizer all of those things makes it the, the silences just makes it silent but the stabilizer helps you a lot with stability that your shots are, you know, more accurate. And, of course, the archery skill helps helps so that your shots are more accurate. But this is basically, you know, like a base, a smaller base that you can build. Um, if you want to AFK skills, okay, what I usually do is, where did I put it? What I usually do is, first of all, let's just throw, okay, let's not throw everything away. Okay, let's not act like animals over here. Let me put all my cooked meat in there. And like this is um, like this is cooked pork steak. Even if this cooked meat gets old, even if this cooked meat gets old, I can still salt it, and you can get salt at the salt mines very easily. And I refresh it back to 100. percent Okay, so there's various ways of of using that. But in any case, let's just put all our meat back here that we've cooked here, and like you guys see, that didn't take a long time, okay, what takes a long time is me explaining everything to you guys, but I think I'm going to put the knife there, I'm going to put that there, I'm going to put that there, I'm going to put that there, I'm going to put this here, I'm going to put this here, I'm going to put this here, and then I just want to get a log to add some weight to me now, where did I put the log? Um, oh, yeah. Normally put the log in here because the only thing you can fit in here is a log. And then you can add a branch as well, you know, just to fill it up. But I think a branch is going to take all the inventory space here. I'm pretty sure a branch is going to take all the inventory space here. So yeah, then I can just go to my wheelbarrow and I can, uh, you know, just put the branch in here to maximize my weight. If I don't have toolboxes, if I don't want to play with toolboxes. And then all I do is I crouch down because I've got two crosses here next to each other. Okay. And I can shift forward. And there I'm just like crawling into my two crosses. While I'm crawling into my two crosses, I'm gaining the maximum amount of strength. Okay. I'm gaining um, constitution. As soon as the food's finished processing, I'm going to gain dexterity. Plus, I'm gaining camouflage. 200 XP is going to go up to, you know, so I'm gaining camouflage and then I'm gaining stealth. 
as you guys can see, my stealth's going up as well, okay? So I'm killing two birds with one stone with my little cross in my yard, just crawling in grass, okay? And then if I want to, like, that is, personally, that's the best AFK there is for me, guys. But you can also use the cabin. Now, again, you can't do this in single player, but you can do this in multiplayer. So in single player, you can just walk up to a wall. And that's it. Now, sometimes, sometimes it's going to deactivate, okay? But the best method that I've got is you just start from a distance and you walk at the wall and you leave everything alone until he just finds his own position there, okay? And then sometimes, sometimes that will happen, okay? Then I'm like, okay, I want to start from the other side, okay? And there. Now, now my body hit this wall before it hit that wall, okay? But AFK still works, guys. AF still, AFK still works. And the only reason you do this is because you're gaining a little bit, you're gaining about three times the amount of constitution that you would normally gain if you're crawling. But because you, we run around in game a lot of the time, you know, you're going to be leveling up constitution naturally. So for me, the best way is, I don't care if you, if you build, I don't care where you built your base. You can always place two crosses in the middle of nowhere, because crosses aren't a lot. Like, Matthias, how difficult is it to craft two crosses? Well, bro, you need two planks. And so you can get the stones. You can get the small stones from the forest. You can get the planks from the forest. You can get a stone knife from the forest. You only need two bolts or two nails. Okay? Per cross. And you can put it down anywhere. And then you can just crawl into it. Bob's your uncle. No fine tuning. No, buh, 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 buh. but it's only for crawling, guys. If your body doesn't touch a lot of things, then it's not for walking. Okay, it's definitely not for walking. But in my personal opinion, crawling with weight on you to maximize your strength and everything is definitely the best. The fact that I'm leveling up my strength, my constitution, my dexterity, my camouflage, and my stealth. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, this freaking long video. Click that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to see and learn everything there is to see and learn about Scum, hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified of future videos. And then, later tonight, I'm going to give you the final trading guide. How to make muchas gracias money. Okay? That's probably the wrong language that I used there. But uh, let's say a shit ton of money. Okay? When you can do kill boxes and you have got the guts to go for cargo drops and you've got the guts to go for the naval base, you know, to loot the naval base and you're doing in-game stuff, how to make money really, really fast. I'll be bringing you guys that video right after the stream, okay? And in case you guys didn't know, I stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, Friday, Fridays and Saturdays at the same time, um, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., um, GMT plus two. A lot of people get confused by GMT plus two, but I'll I'll maybe make a, like a schedule, you know, uh, give you guys the EST or the you know central time, whatever you need. Just know that I do stream um, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, um, and I'll be keeping that schedule for a long time. Have a, have a great day, guys, and have a fun, you know, enjoy the game. It's freaking awesome.